Good evening and welcome to live FFA Cup. It's Victoria Round 7, Avondale hosting Richmond. The winner goes through to a spot in the National Round of 32 where the Hyundai A-League teams lay in wait. It is a huge prize. My name is Teo Pelizzeri. Thank you for your company this evening from Paisley Park in Altona. Sean Moran joins me for a look at this one. We're not far away from our 7.45pm Melbourne kickoff. Two really exciting teams, Sean. Avondale, a known commodity, currently near the top of the NPL. Not quite at the pinnacle, but uh, they are one of the title-chasing teams. Richmond are in State League 1 after consecutive relegations, but that uh, would be a very misleading way for me to introduce what is a fascinating team coming into tonight's match. It certainly is, Teo, and uh, thank you for having me. Uh, a really um, exciting contest, I hope, on the cards tonight. Like you say, on paper, um, it should be a foregone conclusion with Avondale um, at the very top of the National Premier League in second spot, um, and Richmond obviously two leagues uh, below them in, in the Victorian uh, state um, that is uh, in State League One. So uh, you'd think on paper to be uh, quite straightforward for Avondale, but as we know, Richmond are a very different team uh, in 2018, um, boasting a considerable amount of overseas players with um, very fascinating stories. Uh, they've obviously knocked out Hume to get to this stage, and they'll be hoping um, that another MPL sculpt will be claimed this evening. There's the Avondale team. Chris Oldfield, uh, the Englishman in goal, of course, was part of a Sydney FC team that made the FFA Cup final a couple of seasons ago and lost to Melbourne City. Ramatav Sansioglu, the former Melbourne victory man. Jeff Fleming, the uh, Kiwi international from 12 years ago, still uh, going around at 38 years of age. Anthony Strano will play at left back tonight. Stefan Zinni, former Western Sydney Wanderer, amongst other clubs. Liam Boland, Mr. FFA Cup, if there is one. Of course, uh, the hero of Green Gully's FFA Cup run a couple of seasons ago scored that magnificent goal against Central Coast. Evan Christodoulou will play in midfield. Yite Towns, the Tasmanian in midfield as well. Ross Archibald has been there and done it in the Cup with the Bentley Greens. Phil Riccobene, veteran right back. And Elvis Cam Sober. He is many people's pick to be the man to watch in this year's FFA Cup if Avondale can indeed get through to the round of 32. Evan Marker Giannakis, the backup keeper. James Riccobene, brother of Phil. John Mark Offe, one of the youngsters. Jem Bacant, an attacking midfielder. And Christian Inglese, teenage striker. The coach, Anthony Barbieri, has overseen a number of promotions with Avondale since taking over in 2011. They were a state league team themselves and yet have climbed all the way up to the NPL where they currently sit second on the table. So that's the Avondale team for tonight. You get five on the bench, three subs. So uh, for those of you not familiar, conventional football rules. All right, let's take a look at Richmond. They have one Australian in the starting 11, and that is their goalkeeper, Nikola Reganovich. And then we get into the United Nations, uh, the way they've uh, assembled this team, Marcel. Jairo Souza da Silva, Iñaki Sanchez Contador, the experienced Portuguese, Edgar Marcelino, who's played all around the world. Junior Batista will be their starting striker tonight. Mehdi Martin, the Frenchman, actually came to Australia to play for Melbourne Knights last season, now finds himself at Richmond. Evangelos Scraparis, the Greek midfielder. Serafino Lacanina, the Italian midfielder. Arnold Saev, the uh, Russian-German. And Kevin Yan, the Frenchman from Darwin Olympic, who... Uh, managed to get his name out there on the radar in the FFA Cup and now finds himself down in Victoria. On the bench, Ilhan Sumertis, Nick Apostolopoulos, Shimon Kato, the uh, Japanese player who scored at the winning goal against Preston a couple of rounds ago in extra time, so he's already played a key role for them as a sub this year. George Voliotis, one of the Australians, he's actually from Mildura, and Erlance Pinedo, for those of you not familiar, he scored the absolute worldie uh, in the previous round against Hume City. Uh, and the coach is former South Melbourne NSL player Sam Pudikidis, who I remember playing for Hellas back at Lakeside Stadium in the NSL days. So his first real major role, of course, has previously been working his way up the state leagues as well. Sean Moran, we're still a little way from kickoff. Tonight's referee is Pascalis Natas. Run me through your thinking to make the case for a Richmond upset, because as much as we've seen the teams, there are some key players not there for Avondale, namely top NPL goal scorer Kane Shepherd, also former Melbourne City slash Melbourne heart man Jonathan Germano, the Argentine, and also former Melbourne Victory and Brisbane Raw striker Joey Catabian, all of whom are injured, which is uh, great news if uh, you're a Richmond player or supporter this evening because uh, they've got three 
leading strikers, none of whom are going to take the pitch tonight? No, certainly, Taylor, and, and you make a good point. I think Richmond will be delighted uh, with Avondale missing out uh, with three... Uh, you know, very talented players um, and able to make this game. But, you know, you just have to look at uh, who does start tonight and the talent um, and the depth that Avondale have um, all over the park. They're just so strong in defence. Um, so much experience there with Taftan Sioglu, uh, Jeff Fleming, and you've also got uh, the likes of Stefan Zinni in midfield, Yide Towns, Elvis Kamsaba, two really exciting players there um, who will put a lot of pressure. Um, you know, Kamsaba, uh, we, we all know, has a fascinating football story. He was born in Burundi and, and spent some time in a Tanzanian refugee camp and has come to Melbourne. He was obviously with Melbourne Knights last year and, and has come across to Avondale and, and gets a, his opportunity tonight to feature potentially or help his team go forward and potentially feature on the national stage. So a big night for him, Evan Christodoulou and, and like you say, Liam Boland, uh, to have him in the starting 11. They've just got a wealth of of riches there, Avondale, and you know, with Burkan and Glesse, the, their bench is so strong. Marco Janakis, it's going to be very difficult for Richmond. But to answer your question, Teo, I think um, it's the unknown uh, which uh, is, you know, bodes well for Richmond tonight. Um, unless you're an avid fan of State League One, there wouldn't be many uh, NPL teams that probably would have done a significant amount of research on Richmond in the lead up to this game. I'm sure that's probably since changed. Um, they came. Uh, well, they come off a 3-2 win over the Eltham Redbacks on the weekend. It was played on a synthetic pitch. Um, caught the highlights of that game, and um, I think it was Lo Lopez and Sayev, I think, who, who got the goals uh, on that day. So uh, they'll be confident, Richmond. I think they'll be quietly confident um, of potentially uh, sneaking a result here. It's not going to be easy for them, um, but, you know, with a, a, a very international and diverse team they're going to have a lot of individual talent whether they can put it together um, remains to be seen but Nikola Roganovic in goal um, and obviously Chris Oldfield at the other end we're again spoiled uh, for talent in the the goalkeeping department so um, I think Teo we saw in that previous match that Avondale had in round six of the qualifiers against North Sunshine uh, very much again Richmond the underdog on this occasion if they can hold Avondale out and, you know, withstand some early pressure. You just never know what can happen. I tend to agree. I think this is the pick of the ties in round seven. Of course, Bentley Greens have already punched their ticket. They defeated Kingston City 4-0 last week and Heidelberg United are already there because they uh, were the NPL National Champions. Tomorrow night, there's going to be two games right here on the FFE Facebook page. It'll be Port Melbourne versus the Moreland Zebras. And on the NPL Victoria Facebook page and YouTube channel, it will be uh, a return here for Altona Magic against Northcote City. Seen uh, officials walking across the ground. Uh, we are live uh, and interactive with Facebook comments. Uh, and we've got uh, Chris saying, go Richmond. John says, hello. Roberto says, Richmond 2-1. Ray says, go Avondale. Dion, good luck, Richmond. Red Vado says, Alemania. Of course, a Richmond Alemania. Alexander says, I'm calling it now. Liam Boland will score from halfway. Uh, Mems says, go Gem. Talking about Gem Bacant. And Adam Wright, former Richmond player. Come on, Richmond. Another upset. Hashtag underdogs. Let's go, lads. Well, there they are, the Richmond team in their white kit with black shorts. Avondale in all blue as they walk out onto Paisley Park. Pitch in reasonable condition. It does actually have a bit of a slope on it. So um, uh, across the centre of the pitch, it, it rises in the middle and then dips to both wings. But uh, conditions are very good. There's been a little bit of rain during the day, but nothing too significant to uh, disturb the condition of the surface here. And as we see, handshakes take place. Fantastic pictures, thanks to Vidnet Productions, uh, of it tonight. And, uh, well, they, this is it. Last chance for the uh, two teams to you know, settle the nerves and then go out and play for that spot in the round of 32. And I guess a lot of the questions about Richmond are about to be answered. They've already knocked out Hume City, who are one of Victoria's most successful FFA Cup teams. And now they take on Avondale. And this match has been highly anticipated. See the captains of the two sides, Edgar Marcelino and Phil Riccobene, shaking hands. And the referee, Pascalis Nardis, there about to flip the coin. Fantastic to, to have such a close look at all of this as the pre-game shakes out Sean yeah absolutely uh, great coverage um, from the guys up top here and 
and hopefully the football will mirror that this evening. Uh, Teo Richmond um, have been you know, at this stage twice, leaving the round, the round seven, and they've been knocked out previously by Bentley and Hume. They got past Hume in the last round and have a big hurdle to come. Avondale, I don't think, have reached round seven uh, thus far in the qualifiers, so a, a very big opportunity for them. It is, and Bentley Greens already being in the round of 32 means that the remaining three games are being contested between teams, all of whom have never been to those national rounds. So no matter what happens from here on, we have three totally new teams who are going to be represented in uh, the national rounds. The assistant referees tonight, Andrew Stevenson and Carl Petreski, while Lockie Kievers is the fourth official. And uh, the underrated storyline, Sean Moran, is that the two benches are right in front of our commentary position. So we get to see Anthony Barbieri and his assistant, Zoran Markovsky, go nose-to-nose -nose with Sam Pudikidis and his assistant, Matthew McNamara. So that'll be a lot of fun as well. Yeah, it certainly will. Um, but some fascinating matches, like you say, Teo, in this uh, round seven uh, qualifying period with uh, Altona Magic uh, coming here tomorrow evening to, to host Northcote. Um, a little subplot there in that game with uh, Eric Vasiliadis going up against uh, Goran Lozanovsky, uh, the two both coaching together at Port Melbourne. That's fascinating. Um, as we move forward towards kickoff, and it looks as if it's going to be Richmond who will do the honours. So Richmond attacking the right of your screens, Avondale the left. FFA Cup round seven. Just about ready to get underway, and we do. So Richmond get started. It will be fascinating to see how they take on this game and such a decorated opponent as Avondale with some of the talents that they have in their side. An early header for Strano, and now Yite Towns flicking it on. Richmond a chance to consolidate possession. Long ball played by Medi Martin from the centre of defence. Now throwing down the left side, Cam Sober. He's the one to watch for Avondale. Strano hugging the touchline. And early, you can already see Sam Pudikid is telling his team he wants them quicker. So barely 40 seconds in and the gaff is already not happy, Sean. And I guess that's uh, trying to set the tone for the match ahead. Yeah, I think so. And um, I think he'll be hoping that Richmond settle early on. I'm sure there'll be plenty of nerves um, going through. Uh, both sets of players, but it's a real, you know, opportunity for Richmond, you know, with, you know, the wealth of experience that they have. They'll want to be using that this evening, especially with their skipper, Marcelino, um, as we all know, has spent some time previously alongside Cristiano Ronaldo, I think, at Sporting Lisbon. Plenty of experience there as they go forward. Saev, the cutback. Oh, oh, Junior Batista had a tap in and Richmond really should have taken the lead. And the Brazilian forward um, couldn't put Richmond, it in the back of the net. Um, and Richmond, obviously two leagues. Extraordinary. Uh, Junior Batista should have scored, and that should have been 1-0 to Richmond, the underdogs. That's unbelievable. Yeah, it certainly is. That's the sort of chance um, that they need to take tonight, Richmond. That They're probably not going to get many of those, you wouldn't think. Um, they caught Avondale napping in the first minute. Um, and a really, really big opportunity for them goes begging. Um, we just have to see whether you know, they rue that, but some promising moments early on for Richmond. I just wonder, will that sharpen Avondale up and will they allow a chance like that again? Because it was a great run through the right and just absolutely sliced open. Yeah, it was. I don't think they were expecting that at all. And now we have a midfield battle ensuing. Sives had a couple of nice touches early. And Junior Batista knocked off the ball there by Tav Sancioglu. There is plenty of experience. Like I just made reference to Teo in this Richmond team. A lot of players having spent time in Europe. Uh, some of them Europa League qualifiers. So um, they'll be hoping to rely on that tonight. Avondale not looking too rattled by conceding that early chance. Now an opportunity at the centre of defence for Ross Archibald. Long down the right side. Stefan Zinni motoring after the ball. Cut back, didn't get there in time. And it's going to be a goal kick, but he'll be trying to stretch the team in the other direction. Stefan Zinni, plenty of uh, A-League experience and previously at South Melbourne before coming across to Avondale. Yeah, very much so. 
Richmond are going to have to uh, be very careful with Zinni on that right-hand side. He's got some lightning pace and I'm sure will want to create plenty of problems for Richmond. It looks as if Avondale have won a throw in on the right flank. A foul. Middle of the park, which will allow Richmond to regroup. So not even four minutes gone and already some talking points in this contest between the team from State League One. For those of you not familiar with how the pyramid works in Victoria, you've got NPL. NPL 2, which is then two divisions of East and West with 10 teams each. And then you get into State League 1, Northwest and Southeast. So you're already down to teams 35 and below when you get to the likes of Richmond. Throw in. Batista with a little layoff and Avondale sweeping onto the ball. Crossfield pass is hoping for Cam Sober, but Medi Martin is there. Back to Reganovic. Long-time A-League fans will remember him from his Melbourne Heart days. He made a couple of appearances. Wouldn't he love to get back to the FFA Cup stage? So, you know, he's had that time with South Melbourne as Cam Suba goes forward. Towns at the byline, the cut across, and Boland was well back behind not just the keeper, but a couple of defenders. Canella says, good luck to Sam Pudikidis and his boys. Rob says, go Sam. Robert says, come on, Junior. Not happy with uh, Junior Batista missing that early chance, just minutes into the game. Keep the comments coming on Facebook. Make sure you like, share, let people know that you're watching the FFA Cup. Maybe tell us where you're watching in from. We are live and interactive tonight. Trying to work out who will join Bentley and Heidelberg in the round of 32. Mas Marcao, I've been told. Marcao. And now at the centre of midfield. Ripping a diagonal ball, but Strano heads it away. Combative work in there. Well played. Kevin Yan and finding his way to Saev. And now the little look away pass. Onside. Well played there by Scraparis. And then the shot couldn't match. Had so much time and space, though. And again, Avondale's defending has been uncharacteristically loose in these early stages. Yeah, again, from that right-hand side, Teo Saev um, creating some problems with his pace. Um, plenty of control and skill going forward, really um, giving something, Avondale something to think about early on. He made a, a really good pass, and Scraparis probably could have done a little bit better there, fluffed it really, but good signs for Richmond once more as it falls again to Saev. Really getting a lot of possession. Egan Marcelino now. And Saev. Lacking quality, but the cross might still work out for Scraparis. It's off the woodwork. Richmond utterly luckless in these early stages. And now another shot coming in in this one. Oldfield had got big on him. And he initially blocked it with his chest before eventually taking control of the ball. But this is just extraordinary stuff, Sean. Yeah, it was. And I'm curious to see... The replay from that first opportunity as well, Teo. It does look as if that six-yard area isn't particularly smooth. And I'm not. I'm wondering whether that's why Oldfield was really trying to read the bounce initially before committing to the save. Um, bounced in an awkward position in front of him there. So he's probably done well in hindsight to keep that out. And I'm wondering whether that impacted um, that first opportunity for Richmond. But you know, notwithstanding all that, they are looking very, very good and very dangerous going forward on the break in particular. And they are only lining up with one up front, but when they are moving forward in that middle third, they're moving with pace and causing Avondale plenty of headaches. They have had two rolled gold opportunities to score here, and you just wonder if they are going to be made to regret this, or maybe they're just going to keep creating. Here's Kevin Yan, plays this one into Jeff Fleming. And now Medi Martin, Kevin Yan, trying to steady, gives it away. Cam Sober's the danger man for Avondale. They've got to keep it away from him, and... For half a second there, I thought that back pass was rolling straight to Liam Boland. And now, Tafsansioglu. Bit of a hopeful ball, and it's dealt with by Lacanina. Back to his goalkeeper. Howard says he's watching from Leeston, Suffolk in the UK. That's great. So the FFA Cup international going international. And Robert says, Richmond are going to win. We are way too good. 
And uh, Spiro wants to know if Revolt is playing. That's the wrong Richmond buddy. But, uh, <laughs> Spiro already dominating the comments section in the early stages of the game. We love it. Keep them coming. Indeed. All the enthusiasm. Is all very much welcome as Avondale try and play out from the back through Oldfield. Just a reminder, you can watch on YouTube as well. Football Fed Vic. So Facebook and YouTube going at the same time tonight. We hope you're enjoying the coverage. We had a pretty healthy audience for... Bentley Greens against Kingston City last week on both platforms. Long ball down the flank and Iñaki Sanchez rising to win the header. Means Avondale will get the ball. Phil Riccobene charging through Macau. Another chance for Avondale. At the byline, cut across by Yite Towns. Cam Sober couldn't quite control it. Did get a boot to the ball, but Saif was there to take it away. And now just calming things down, Richmond. Plenty of height in this Richmond team. Teo, the likes of Marcel, Jairo Souza, De Silva, two Brazilians. He'll be looking to dominate the likes of Elvis Kamsaba and Ute Towns. Avondale not pressing up too earnestly at the moment. We mentioned some of the injured attackers that they're missing tonight. Still got a very handy team, but I'm sure they'd love the options of Kane Shepherd, Joey Katavian. And of course, Jonathan Germano, who's spent so much of his time in the NPL, struck by injury, but when he has played, has been pretty much a dominant force. Here's a long ball for Towns, and a bit of loose checking from Richmond. It's given him half a chance here. Sanchez Contador comes across, and now the cross from Zinni. Boland was running from too deep, and it's a composed header to get it out of the penalty area. It's still going to be Avondale ball, though, over on the left side. It was an important header. It was Boland ghosting in the back post. Hoping to get to it. Fortunately for Richmond, it does go out for a throw in. Boland, and now can't keep possession. Kevin Yan, down the right side. Junior Batista looking a little bit helter skelter as he went running there. Avondale have still played themselves into a little bit of trouble, but Jeff Fleming calms it all down. You wonder whether that will be a common theme tonight. Teo and Richmond go for their target man, Batista, and whether he'll be able to get the support that he needs from the likes of his captain. We'll try and play off him going forward. And Avondale, I think, in the last few minutes have really tried to settle and try and get a grip on this game. And they probably weren't expecting the first five to ten minutes to have played out as they did. I think they really need to stamp their authority on this game as the NPL team and try and make their mark as Tafsan Zioglu tries to keep the ball in. Well, we are 12 minutes in. And I'm actually a little bit surprised how calm the Avondale coaching staff are because it's been an uncharacteristically slow, a little bit sloppy sort of start. They need to switch on mentally here, Sean. It's their strongest available 11, but I was here watching their NPL game against Heidelberg on Friday night, and this game uh, has certainly not matched the intensity or the pace of that match in these early stages. We know that Avondale's best looks a lot better than what we've seen through 12 and a half minutes so far. Yeah, indeed. And they've been battle-hardened in the last three games against the likes of Bentley, South Melbourne and Heidelberg. They're, you know, a very, very tough three-match period for Avondale. So you would think they'd be well and truly, you know, ready for this game and, and not underestimating Richmond. But it's, it's always difficult when you haven't played a team before to sort of, I guess, get a gauge of as to what they are. You can only do so much from highlights. That's extraordinary. No um, nonsense clearance there. Clearance aiming it out. Cameraman <laughs> Nathan Sack up in the scissor lift. And, oh, he's done himself a mischief here, Markow, as he drove that clearance 
into touch because he's down and hurt. And that is a concern. You can see his left knee is heavily strapped, but I think it's the right leg which is the problem here. Trainer around to him straight away. And this is not what Richmond would have wanted. Their last two FFA Cup ties have gone 120 minutes, Sean. Neither made it to penalties. They managed to beat both Preston and Hume City by scoring an extra time. The last thing they would want to have to do is burn an early sub here, given that mm. quite quite simply this game is in the balance and you wouldn't rule out 120 minutes again this evening. No, that's right. And it looks as if I think he might be okay. He's got up to his feet um, now after some treatment, Marcel. So left ankle, uh, right ankle, I reckon. Right ankle, yeah. He, he does look as if he's walking a little bit gingerly on it, but hopefully from a, a Richmond perspective, he'll be up and going because you do want to see the better players um, in matches like this, Teo. And hopefully a bit of some magic spray or some treatment down there can get him back onto the park and without too much further delay. We've got Rod watching in, says Uncle Rod, says go Yite go, and uh, so does Jake. So he's got his family watching in. There's Sam Pudiketis, the Richmond coach, on the screen. Just checking with Mark Howe that he's all right to go. And even though we're at the home of Altona Magic, it's one of their Macedonian brethren, Preston, that have had a few fans log in and just dominate the comments early doors. Of course, Richmond knocked Preston out a couple of rounds ago. Here is Yite Towns. Trying to drag the ball into his control, but he was surrounded by white shirts and Medi Martin ended up taking the ball away. And now Edgar Marcelino sending it out to the left side. Scraparis running after it, can't chase it down. They've got some pacey players and if you do look at the Richmond Facebook page, some of the goals that they've scored this season, even the uh, two of the three goals against Eltham Redbacks at the weekend, Sean, mm -hmm. just beautiful yeah. strikes. And Peaches. I guess that what... That's what makes some of the uh, the wasteful finishing in the first 15 minutes here a little bit of a shock because the one thing perhaps you could rely on from Richmond is that if they were presented with a chance, they might just take it. Yeah, very much so. Um, there were a couple of crackers in that game against Eltham. I think it was Saev with the first goal. Uh, a real bullet across the goal that went into the side of the goal and Pinedo Lopez who knocked one into the top corner from outside the area. So... Avondale will not want to be giving them any more opportunities as they go forward. Zinni, Richmond close ranks and are able to clear it not decisively though. Strano up against Saev. Been perhaps Richmond's most impressive in these early stages, right in front of the Richmond bench as it goes out. It's the intensity, Taylor, from Richmond in particular, which is very promising, I think, for them. And Sam Prudikidis would be very happy, I think, with their start. I think he'd obviously be, would have been a little bit happier had they been able to take their chances. But, boy, have they started with a flurry. They just really look up for this game. Down the left side, Scraparis trying to get past Riccobene, who's got him outpointed on this occasion. High ball. Mark out, back on the pitch. And now Gyro. Can't miss him with that haircut that he's got tonight. And he's done well getting it across to Lacanina. And the end result is a good one for Richmond. Able to win a throw. There is Gyro Souza da Silva. And that is just absolutely garish. But it guarantees you're going to get a bit of screen time, doesn't it, Sean, that haircut? <laughs> it certainly does. Um, it's centre back. Magic of the cup. Indeed. So I have... Able to control the ball here. Havendale don't want to take it off him. So he goes back to Medi Martin. Oh, late, late mm. challenge from Boland. Right in front of the fourth official in Sam Pudikitis on the Richmond bench. Well, we had a bird's eye view of it too. I reckon Liam Boland's a little fortunate. Mm. We'll have to wait and see what transpires. Medi Martin is still down and Richmond are going to need to defend without one of their centre backs here. Eventually play has been stopped by Pascal Asnatis. And Medi Martin... Is down and hurt. Yeah, he hasn't moved since that tackle from Boland. I think Boland was going for the ball, but may have caught him quite late. And the Frenchman slowly getting back up to his feet. He has previously spent some time, obviously, with the Melbourne Knights last year. And was actually in the top tier in Luxembourg. He's also featured in some Europa League qualifiers here. So plenty, again, of experience. Um, for Medi Martin, and again, Richmond would want to be keeping these sorts of players on the pitch. Well, he's back up again. Fourth official seemed pretty unmoved by it all. 
Spiro with another good little one-liner saying it's not gyro, it's gyro. Thank you, Spiro. <laughs> That's two. You're going to have to give us your best material to get read out on air, quite simply. It's uh, great to have plenty of people commenting and watching on. <laughs> Let us know where you're watching in from. We've got an international audience, as we always do, for our live streaming games in the FFA Cup. Plenty of interest in this competition has really captured the imagination of the Australian football landscape with more than 700 teams entering and well over 200 of those coming from Victoria. It's amazing to think that we're down to the last six. Two have already gone through. Six more competing tonight and tomorrow. And here's Edgar Marcelino for Richmond. Can't roll past Fleming. Battle of two veteran midfielders. Christodoulou and now Towns. Gyro trying to chase him down. Can't get there. Stefan Zinni has switched flanks over to the left and he gets past Lacanina and then Medi Martin with an agricultural challenge. Richmond just taking preventative measures there and Martin will be very lucky to avoid a booking. Yeah, he a and, and he doesn't, he gets a yellow card. Yeah, it was cynical there from Martin. I thought um, the best thing he may have been able to do there was try and corral uh, Zinni, who was obviously moving with a lot of speed towards the byline. Um, you know, he may have been able to get time to whip one into the middle, which obviously would have posed some danger for Richmond, but I think Martin there, you know, he could have gone two ways. He's probably made the right decision in the end. It is probably um, a little bit dangerous for them to, to have him book so early on, but um, what could be more dangerous is this set piece for Avondale on the left. We've got plenty of men forward now for this. Interesting that they've got a left-footed taker in Christodoulou, so it's going to be an outswinger. And it's straight onto the head of Gyro. Zinni. Looks like a high boot potentially, but Junior Batista didn't make contact. And Richmond escaped. Chance to counter-attack. Saev down the right side. And in his desperation to keep it away from Elvis Camsober, he's knocked it out. But Richmond's first priority was to deal with defending the free kick. They did that successfully. They did, but Stefan Zinni showing... And when he does get the ball, and he can break with pace, can pose some problems for Richmond as he gets the ball again. Stefan Zinni trying to escape. And now the through ball, Cam Sober. Reganovic went feet first and is able to clear. Good clearance in the end. Marcelino with a flick header. Junior Batista goes chasing, but Ross Archibald has got him covered. And now Jeff Fleming. It's becoming a little bit more open, a bit more end to end. Christodoulou. Into a 50-50, Fleming kept it away from Marcelino. Now Archibald. Riccobene. Junior Batista able to nick in and take the back pass. Richmond on the attack. Marcelino, this is shooting range for Edgar Marcelino. Oh. Tipped over the bar. Sensational save from Oldfield. And Edgar Marcelino... Had one thought in mind, and that was to fire from distance. I was just about to say, Teo, before he's taken that shot, it's going to be a very fascinating duel between him and Jeff Fleming and whether Fleming will be able to keep up with the lively Marcelino. It's only a handful of seconds later. He does get on the ball and definitely well worth a shot from that range. Chris Oldfield, um, I'm not sure if it was the light, but he did look a little bit troubled by the shot. It did dip. Fortunately for him, he was able to get a fingertip on it. Richmond with the best of all the early chances. Now they've got a corner. This one to the near post. Attempted flick on. Shouts for handball from the bench. Referee obviously a lot closer to the action. And it's been cleared away initially. Richmond retained the ball though. Lucking you up. It's going to fall at the byline for Saev. Batted away by Oldfield. Yet another shot on target. And now Avondale clear it away. So by my count, that is four clear-cut chances in just 22 minutes for Richmond. And, well, two misses and two saves. Keeps this score at nil-nil. Zinni, counter for Avondale. Trying to open the oh. scoring through Boland. And, well, he was in the midst of spinning out of the way of the ball almost as he put it over the bar. But this is uh, fascinating, this match, and yet another... Saved by Oldfield here. He's already had to do a bit of work. Yeah, it's set up really, really well for Saev. Wound up on that left foot of his. Thumped the ball towards Oldfield, who was there to make the save. And again, Avondale 
showing once more that on the break um, they can be dangerous. Stefan Zinni again with a, another really nice delivery into the area. Liam Boland probably not positioning himself as well as he would have liked. Wasn't able to get the header on goal and guide it towards uh, the goal. But in saying that, um, it's for a neutral. Teo, this game is, is well and truly alive and kicking and hopefully we see more of it. It's actually hard to believe we're only 23 minutes in. Barely a quarter of the way through the 90. And of course, if we can't get a winner within the 90, we'll have extra time. There must be a winner tonight. And right now, Richmond are looking the better team. But you wonder, fitness level and the intensity of State League 1 versus the intensity of NPL. They probably need to score here, Sean. Some of the chances they've created, mm. it's actually a little bit hard to believe that the game is still scoreless. Plenty of comments coming through. We are live and interactive. Jack says he's torn between Master Chef and the FFA Cup. Well, I think there's only one choice there, Jack. Jimmy says hello from New York. Scott Barton wants to know if Kane Shepherd is playing. He's not. He's out injured tonight after leaving Friday's game hurt, unfortunately. Robert loving the work of Edgar Marcelino. Here's Yute Towns. Ball at his feet and now laying it off to Campsober. Oh. Blocked away. Yaki Sanchez getting his body in the road at the last second and Avondale starting to open up some gaps of their own. Yeah, that was an very, very, very important block. Towns with a lovely diagonal ball across to Elvis Campsober. Took a touch, pulled the trigger. And that was definitely going on target. So very, very important uh, interception there. Gives Avondale another corner. Jeff Towns says lots of Yite's Tasmanian family tuning in. And he's not going to get a look here as Archibald goes for the header. It wasn't a good punch from Raganovic, but he got a second bite at it. And Ross Archibald, who hit the crossbar from a corner on Friday night against Heidelberg, not able to get the power behind that header there. And now Zinni with an awkward back pass, but Strano's a left footer and is able to hook it out for a throw. Senzo says, come on, Elvis. Adelaide, we are watching the family, of course. Elvis Campsover's brother, Pacific, plays for the Adelaide United youth team. To be honest, I'm a little bit surprised Elvis isn't in the A-League at the moment. Maybe a good cup run will help get his name out there. Still only young. Richmond, though, on the ball at the moment. Means that Avondale have to turn their attention to defending. Saev. Now, neat little turn here. Scraparis, no power behind his attempt into the box. Gyro battling against Boland. Now Avondale consolidate through Riccobene. Things calm down for a moment. And Yaki Sanchez wins the throw. Modest crowd in, about 350 to 400. Of course, neither team has a huge fan base, but. We know that getting to the national rounds of the FFA Cup can do amazing things for a club, and I think both would be acutely aware of the opportunity to bring first-time fans through the gate if they're able to get to that big stage. Yep, very much so. And whether the FFA Cup round of 32 you know, would be here at Paisley Park or at Kevin Bartlett Reserve, I think um, every football fan in Victoria would love to see that one way or another. For those of you who are joining the broadcast, it's been a fascinating game so far. Richmond missed a golden opportunity in the opening minute of the match. Junior Batista had a tap in in the six-yard box, run through his legs basically, staring at an empty net. And a couple of good saves from Chris Oldfield since then to deny the likes of Edgar Marcelino and Arnold Saev. Avondale have had looks of their own, but none of the quality of Richmond's. Good to see the live audience rising as well. Like, share, let people know you're watching the FFA Cup. Medi Martin shaking off that injury from earlier in the game. Reganovic. Strano. Zinni under pressure. Ends up giving the ball away. Taking a few steps there. Uh, Nakanina rightfully being told to come back by his coach. He tries to go for the obvious and 
Pick out Batista. Now Strano off the back. So the ball has advanced all of about three metres. Nakanina just keeps wandering up the touchline and this time Batista conceding possession. You can hear the shouts of the benches right underneath our microphone. Tonight. It's actually been pretty pleasant between the two dugouts so far. Might have expected there would be a little bit more banter, but maybe they're saving that for when things heat up on the pitch. <laughs> and now a free kick. Edgar Marcelino will be dangerous here. Richmond have quite a tall team. Avondale trying to organise here. Set piece from Edgar Marcelino. Can't beat the near man. Christodoulou gets it away. And Cam Sober. There's a lone hand up top at the moment. Sanchez Contador. Plays it back to Lacanina. Gyro can't control the ball, but Sanchez Contador is there to clear the lines. Tafsensioglu judges the bounce and gets it back to Oldfield. Christodoulou's long ball. Ricky Bane sets himself. Cam Sober went leaping. Markow couldn't cover it. And now Stefan oh. Zinni. Shades of handball, yeah. and the referee has seen it. It's a penalty for Avondale. Pascal Asnatis points to the spot. And I'm not sure why it's Stefan Zinni leading the protests there. Avondale have got the decision they wanted. They're going to have a penalty. Yeah, well, you wonder where, whether he was claiming, um, you know, advantage may have been appropriate. And I think it's clearly struck the hand whether, you know, there's a, a deliberate intention there to, to do that is arguable. Um, so there's arguments from uh, both camps, but regardless, it's a penalty for Avondale and Liam Boland over the ball against Nikola Raganovic. This could be a, a very, very crucial moment in this game, Taro. It really could, given the chances that Richmond have not been able to take. Avondale in the lead is going to give them a huge mental boost. Liam Boland against Nikola Raganovic, who does have a good history saving penalty kicks. Boland for the lead. And Boland clinical with the penalty kick. Avondale won Richmond nil. And Mr. FFA Cup, Liam Boland is good from the spot to give the home team the advantage and now Richmond will rue those opportunities that they missed. Indeed a calm finish there from Boland on the left. Um, he did look up to the top right but I think he always knew that was going into the bottom corner and Raganovic um, probably a little bit disappointed there. He picked which side and couldn't get across quickly enough. There's plenty of power on that from Boland and it's gone in and, and like you say Richmond Probably a little bit disappointed now. They weren't able to make um, their previous pressure count, but I think that's a really, really important goal for Avondale now, Teo. We saw what that first goal did against North Sunshine for them. It really helped them along. Um, so I think Richmond, that's a, that's a big blow for them, but there's still plenty of time in this game, an hour to come, and if they can you know, put together some of, you know, even half the opportunities that they have in the first 20 minutes, um, you know, there's still an opportunity for them to get back into this. Certainly is. And let's not forget they did trail to Hume City in the previous round before coming back. They've only trailed in one of their league games so far this year where they have seven wins and two draws. But of course undefeated in the league means that any deficit they've had they've been able to overcome. So foul here against Gyro means that it's going to be an Avondale free kick. And really, Richmond's been the story so far. 31st minute, the goal, but most of the talking points have surrounded the State League One side. And now you wonder if Avondale, with the security of a goal in the bank, might look a little bit more confident and start to dictate the terms of the game. Boland, the flick header. Oh. Towns got there, and oh. it's two. A quick-fire double from Avondale, and Yite Towns cashing in as Richmond heads fall. And perhaps now the NPL outfit is looking good to progress to the round of 32 because it's a big mountain for Richmond to climb.
Yep, your words were prophetic there, Teo. Um, Avondale with their tails up after the first goal. Um, confidence was high. Richmond probably a little emotionally um, unstuck and a little bit down after that. And I think it was Marcel who was ball watching there um, and didn't track it. Hey, Towns, who moved forward, got himself into a wonderful position and did the business from close range, but a nice little lob over the top to beat Nikola Roganovic, who, to be fair, probably couldn't do too much from that. And while well, a double blow in only a handful of minutes could be very, very telling now and make it very difficult for Richmond to get back into this game. One was not a huge obstacle. Two, well, this is going to be quite the comeback if Richmond can find a way in from here. Yite Towns is going to cause Facebook to explode because so many of his family are watching from Tasmania. The likes are going crazy. And I'm sure they'll be happy. Avondale 2. Richmond at nil, a bit of a misleading scoreline, but Avondale have taken their chances, and now Richmond with it all to do, they'd love to get one of these two back before half time. That is the difference at this level, Teo. You have to take your chances, and Richmond created probably some of the, the better quality chances, but just weren't able to put them away at the right time. And you just wonder, you know, a team that obviously have, have largely been uh, put together in. I guess this calendar year, how much mental resolve will they have to try and keep their nerve and, and try and you know, wrestle their way back into this? Last free kick from Edgar Marcelino. Couldn't beat the near defender. This one, again, dealt with quite comfortably by the Avondale team. Strano with a high volley. Sanchez Contador. Gyro. Now to Scraparis. First time ball. Junior Batista. Oh, clumsy from Tafsan Sioglu, but nothing that constituted a foul, so play goes on. And now Stefan Zinni might be away. A third would be the knockout punch, and Cam Sober is offside. Even this early, you'd think three would be too many, but Richmond have got to be careful here. They, they are perhaps emotionally down at the moment, and they don't want this game to suddenly disappear out of reach. Yeah, it's the sort of moment where the likes of Marcelino... You know, Sam Pretty Kid is really need to step up here and just tell their team it's not over yet. You just need to keep a lid on it at this stage. And although the two goals you know, were certainly anything from ideal, if they can go into the, the break at only 2 0 down, it still gives them hope going into the second half. But you just feel Taylor, a third goal here before half time would really put this game to bed. Richmond just need to settle things down and try and get back to playing the sort of football they were in the first quarter of an hour, which made it very, very difficult for Avondale. We're not going to do so with passes like that. And Avondale will be very, very happy with the last five minutes. They certainly will. Richmond looking a little rattled. Boland is closely guarded. Zinni and Reganovic. Casual as you like. They've just got to get their midfield involved in this game once more, Teo. So the likes of Saev, Marcelino on the ball in the midfield earlier on, and driving at the Avondale back four. That's what was creating them so many problems. They're really going to try and get their middle third involved in this game once more and try and avoid thumping the ball long and going the direct route to Junior Batista, which is going to have its limitations as Jeff Fleming goes oh. in. And uh, Ethan Marcelino went to ground. Jeff Fleming protesting in earnest. Just a foul, no cards. Obviously saw something you didn't like there, Jeff Fleming. He was, for the uh, offending player... Perhaps on the front foot, trying to protest to the referee. The dialogue has continued. The debate. Jeff Fleming going to be spoken to by the referee as he pleads his case. And both players, as a matter of fact. So the referee calms things down. Still plenty on the clock until half time for Richmond to try and Rest back one of these two goals that they currently trail by. As things stand, the 
first three Victorian teams to get into the FFA Cup round of 32 would be the top three on the NPL Victoria ladder, which is perhaps a fair reflection of where things are at at the moment. When some of the big names like Melbourne Knights and South Melbourne got knocked out well over five weeks ago in round four, you might have been forgiven for thinking that there was a changing of the guard in Victoria, but in fact, right now, we're sending top teams to the national rounds because South and Knights aren't occupying any lofty league positions at present. So we see a bit of physicality from Cam Sober to win the ball. Boland switching out to Zinni. Stefan Zinni. Can he find a way through? He puts in the cross and then it's whipped away by Sanchez Contador at the last. Dangerous ball into the area though. Strano with the follow-up. That one is over hits. Yeah, Laganina is going to have to mark Stefan Zinni very, very tightly. Saw so Zinni weigh up his options and get past Laganina. Really, really good centering ball. Unable to pick out his man, but Zinni is looking very, very uh, lively on this left flank, particularly since he has made the switch. Bowling now. Knocked over by Gyro, and the referee does not let it slide. Markow gets a yellow card. 40th minute, so he joins Mehdi Martin in the book, and the cards may be a bit of a concern here as the game wears on if 50% of the defence is on a yellow. Yeah, cynical challenge from behind. I think Sam Pudikidis um, was trying to make the case that um, perhaps there may have been a, a yellow card at the opposite end that could have been distributed to Jeff Fleming. Probably feels a little bit hard done by, but was it a clumsy challenge from behind? Zinni. Scrano. Happy to go all the way back to Oldfield as we tick into the final five minutes of this first half at Paisley Park. Christodoulou. Marcal. Brought down initially, but possession given away by Richmond. Towns cutting through the middle, Cam Sober. He's quick, Elvis Cam Sober, and he tees up Zinni for three. Avondale disappearing into the distance now, 3 0 up. And it looks as though one of the leading lights in Victorian football is going to punch their ticket to the FFA Cup round of 32 for the first time, unless we get one of the all time comebacks in the second half. That's the difference, Taylor. It's a very simple equation in this sport. You've got to take your chances, and Stefan Zinni getting into a, a very, very good position there. Elvis comes over. Look at that speed between the likes of Zinni, Towns, and Elvis comes over in that front third. Absolutely blistering. And they've gone past Marcel and De Silva. Probably too much pace for them so far tonight. Again, they've been clinical in front of goal, Avondale. Might be the difference overall, but for a miraculous comeback from Richmond in the second half. They've just been too good taking their chances, and Richmond now really need to try and ensure that it doesn't get worse for them. Well, I think the real question here is, can Richmond mentally rise to the, the challenge here? Because the first goal has knocked the stuffing out of them. Given the quality of their play when the game was nil-nil, it's safe to say that it's fallen off the edge of a cliff after that penalty in the 31st minute. And then the goal almost immediately after for Yute Towns. Of course, it can be done. This time a year ago, we watched South Melbourne come back from 4-1 down to beat Dandenong City 5-4. So we know that we have had miracles in the FFA Cup, but I think this one might be on a similar scale if Richmond can get back into the game. More so because they're just playing without any real belief at the moment. Gyro. Defender caught in possession. Now Marcao comes through. Junior Batista. We've barely called his name for the last 20 minutes. Now Saev. Feeds the ball through the right. Lacanina. 
Gets a second chance at it, and it's turned away. Desperate defending from Avondale, behind for a corner. Yeah, good overlap from Lacanina coming across on the right. Saev knew he was there. Put a lovely ball across. And Avondale getting their defence well and truly organised there and able to clear the danger. But another reminder that Richmond, when they do go forward, can offer something. Just got to make one of these chances count, and ideally for them before the break. Marcelino's corner. And the header goes up. Some clumsy defending and attacking in there. Eventually, the ball comes out, and to no great purpose. See it hit the trees behind the goal. And that will take us into the last minute of regulation at the end of the first half. What's Sam Pudikidis' team talk during the break, Sean Moran? He's almost within earshot of us, so anything you do say might actually end up being repeated in the rooms. Yeah, I think Sam has to really sort of... Um, I guess try and get his team to go back to, um, you know, playing their, their brand of football. And I think we saw um, what they are capable of, Richmond, particularly in that first quarter of an hour where they were blistering, um, particularly on the counter-attack. They, they offered a lot of pace and kept the ball on the ground and moved it very, very quickly. Um, I think they've got to try and exploit, you know, perhaps the, the reduction in pace. The likes of Tafsan Sioglu, Jeff Fleming, they've really got to try and exploit that they've got a lot of quick midfielders in there and um, i think they've just got to probably get some more bodies forward we just saw there batista will be one of many occasions now where he has been isolated by himself and you're three nil down and chasing the game they're probably going to have to um, take a few more risks and go forward but it's a very very difficult task for them against an avondale team who have been clinical on the break two minutes of additional time to end the first half then so the ball goes all the way back to Oldfield and now out to Strano. Avondale will be happy enough just to take this one into the rooms with the clean sheet intact. And what about Avondale's mentality? Do they come out and try to lock this one up or do you think they just hope that maybe Richmond's desperation to, to go forward will leave them vulnerable to be picked off for even more goals in the second half. Yeah, I think so. I think for Avondale, they've just got to um, try and maintain as much possession as they can, really dictate the terms of the game, and I think that'll, minute by minute, take the stuffing out of Richmond. The last thing they want to do is concede an, an early goal at the beginning of the second half. The longer the game stays at 3-0, the, the less, less chances the less of a chance that is for, for Richmond to get back into this. So just to keep the game on their terms and not let Richmond back into it. Skriparis. Last opportunity then for Richmond with only a minute of the two allocated in stoppage to go. Saev. Through ball, Junior Batista, Oldfield is first to get to it. And even though it's squirmed free, he's able to recover and pick the ball up. Take his time here and try to get Avondale to the break. So I have once again looking good when he runs at the Avondale defence. And probably a little bit too much on it on that occasion. Um, we all knew what he was trying to do there and I think Batista did as well. Probably just a little bit too much on it, but... Again, they're showing Richmond that they're, they're not sitting back. They are willing to keep going forward, and that's what I do like to see. I think they're going to have to continue to do this for obvious reasons in the second half. All it may take to is one goal, and you know, it may set off a, a much bigger response from them, but it's going to be very difficult, and I think that's half time. It is. So, Mark out, down injured. We already saw him receive treatment once in the first 45, and the referee deciding enough's enough. We go to the break then. Goals coming from the penalty spot for Liam Boland in the 31st minute. Two minutes later for Yite Towns running onto a set piece. And then Stefan Zinni on the end of a cutback in the 41st minute. Means that at halftime, Avondale with one foot in the national rounds for what would be their very first visit to the FFA Cup round of 32. They lead Richmond 3-0.
Live pictures here of Paisley Park and Richmond Soccer Club coming back out onto the pitch. 3-0 down at halftime in this FFA Cup round seven tie. But that doesn't even begin to tell the story of a first half that was pretty extraordinary with Richmond dominating the first 15 minutes and the game generally when it was 0-0 only then to uh, capitulate as Avondale scored two in the space of three minutes and then added a third within eight minutes. So we'll have a look at how they managed to rocket into the lead Avondale. The first was from a penalty. Liam Boland sent to the spot after a handball. And he dispatched it rather clinically beyond Nikola Reganovich in the Richmond goal. So that was 1-0 in the 31st minute. Then Ross Archibald's free kick. Yite Towns on the end of Liam Boland's header. Deft touch and just the little toe poke enough to get over Reganovich. And that was 2-0. And all of a sudden, Richmond looking very demoralised and perhaps ripe for the picking as uh, Yite Towns played Elvis Cam sober through the right side. And his cutback found Stefan Zinni. And Sean Moran, that's where we are at halftime. 3-0 to Avondale. Yep, it's backs against the wall stuff for Richmond going into this second half. Um, it's going to be very, very difficult for them to get back into this game. But you just never know, Teo, an early goal could set the cat amongst the pigeons. Um, and it looks as if, um, you know, for Avondale, uh, I think I think we all know an, an early goal for them could put this game well and truly to rest. Um but it's not quite over yet, and, and hopefully uh, an, an entertaining second half, or at least half as entertaining as the first one was. So We're going to have one sub for Avondale. James Riccobene has come on, and by process of elimination, I think it's his brother who he may have replaced Phil. Mm. So, in fact, he has. So that's the current state of affairs. They've switched right backs, and... Well, Richmond are pulling out all the stops because Shimon Cato and Erlance Pinedo have been subbed on at the start of the second half for them. So a couple of attacking changes. Not a shock that Junior Batista has been replaced here at the start of the second half after his glaring miss. And we'll get to the bottom of who the other player that's been replaced is here at the start of the second half as we get back underway. FFA Cup Round 7, spot in the National Round of 32, up for grabs. And it is Avondale 3 leading Richmond at nil. Neither of these teams have ever been to the national rounds in the past. And right now it's Avondale who look good to go for the first time. Don't forget uh, we are live and interactive on Facebook and also YouTube. So you've got options tonight. You can choose your platform and enjoy the stream. Mas Marcao is the other player who's come off. And Sean Moran, that's also not a surprise because he was battling injury not once but twice during the course of that first half. Yeah, he was, Marcao. He was labouring at times and was also um, late on a couple of challenges. I think he was just beaten for pace uh, quite a lot. So um, with Shimon Kato, the, the Japanese winger coming on, I think there's going to be more of a need for Richmond, I think, for them to get some more pace into this lineup. And I'm really surprised... Um, I was really surprised to see that Pinedo Lopez didn't start this game. Um, he's been in very, very good form as recent as the weekend. And I think he'll offer plenty for them going forward, the Spanish attacking midfielder. So they're going for it here, Richmond, and, and they have to. They've got no choice. Um, so, again, hopefully this opens the game up further for a, you know an entertaining second half. Well, they've got nothing to lose here, Richmond. I suppose... If the history books say 3-0, no one will bat an eyelid. If they say 6-0, people will simply look at uh, Avondale's division and Richmond's division and say, well, you know, it is what it is. So why not go for it? Why not throw caution to the wind and try to peg one goal back and it maybe can reignite the fluency that we saw when the game was scoreless. And for those of you who haven't seen it, get, get the uh, YouTube channel up because you can go back and watch the replays at your leisure. Even in the first 30 seconds of the game, it was an empty net tap-in, staring Junior Batista in the face, and quite simply, the ball just ran through his legs, and he missed it. So Richmond should have taken the lead and then created some great opportunities, only to be foiled by some good saves by Chris Oldfield. And of course, he has a great history, Oldfield, in the FFA Cup. He was even on the bench for Sydney FC when they lost the final to Melbourne City a couple of editions ago. Facebook comments coming through. Robert still believes, says Richmond are the better side. We're going to win. Uh, Dean says Avondale for the A-League. I guess they have they were playing Provy 1 back in <laughs> 2010, Sean Moran. So 
why can't they be in the A-League? They've already won umpteen promotions in the last decade or so. We've also got Peter says, down 3-0 at halftime, Richmond to come back and tie the match 3-3 and win on penalties, the miracle of Paisley Park. So there is plenty of belief in this Richmond team and there are some who have not given up on them, staging a comeback of some sort here. The scripts are being writ written as we speak. There's a big header there from, I think it may have been De Silva. And goes into touch, a goal kick, which is something that Avondale will be quite pleased with. I don't think they'll be in too much of a hurry this evening, particularly in this second half now, to get the ball forward. They'll be very satisfied to keep the ball, knock it around and keep the game on their terms. So give me your thoughts for tomorrow night's two games right here on the FFV Facebook page and YouTube channel. You will be able to watch from 7.30pm Port Melbourne Sharks against Moreland Zebras. You can also get down to JL Murphy reserve for that one. It's an NPL team who are currently sitting in the top six in Port Melbourne up against Moreland Zebras who are flying high top of NPL 2 West trying to win promotion having missed out narrowly for the last three years in a row. And uh, they're coming off a 6-0 win against Nunawading City at the weekend. Uh, Sean, who do you like and why to win Port Melbourne versus the Moreland Zebras tomorrow night? And again, go to the FFA Cup round of 32 for the first time. Yeah, it's a big game for both teams, Taylor. Like you say, um, Port Melbourne and, and Moreland both in, in very, very good form. Um, Moreland under the stewardship of... Fausto Diamitrius, a former Socceroo. We'll stay with play here because Cam Sober has broken the line on the left. Zinni waiting in the middle. Can they link up again? Not this time. And no one through the right side of the box for Avondale, but Elvis Cam Sober's sheer speed causing all sorts of trouble. And now Sanchez Contador is able to mop up. Back to Gyro. And they weren't quite out of trouble as Gyro blazes it out for a throw. Sorry, Sean, I'll let you finish your, your, the points you were making about Port Melbourne versus Moreland Zebras. Yeah, so like I said Moreland um, with a few former A-League players in their lineup, the likes of Jake Barker Dace, John McLean, Alec Goodwin. Um, they've got a bit of firepower up front. Do Moreland and obviously a very good coach there. Zinni goes around Gyro, can't get around Riganovic. Up against you know, a Port Melbourne team um, really galvanised at the moment. Probably the best form they've been in potentially in the, the National Premier League for some time. And they'll be trying to do everything they can to try and get through to the round of 32 for the first time. A really comprehensive win against South Melbourne on the weekend. We'll have their tails up, a home tie. Very, very big fixture for Port Melbourne. They have never got to this stage of the competition and gotten through. So a lot on the line for both teams. but. In any case, it'd be great to see one of these teams make it through. Marcelino, the cross, and it's defended at the far post by Strano. Ghosting in late was Saev, but he couldn't get to the ball. And now Cam Sober back helping out the Avondale defence. Richmond win possession back through Medi Martin. So another encouraging sign for Richmond as they try to pick back one of these three goals, but Avondale now starting to resist. I went and watched Port Melbourne beat South Melbourne 4-2 at the weekend. They were 4-0 up. And really, all their, their top guns were playing well. Yuta Konagaya, the Japanese import who made his name in the FFA Cup last season playing for Blacktown, he scored. He's got four in his last two games. Francesco Stella, as we know, has been around the A-League and overseas and now back at NPL level with Port Melbourne. So if I had to tip, Sean, I am going to say Port Melbourne to win, but you can make a pretty good case for the Moreland Zebras, especially because they are quite a... Solid defensive team. Here's Zinni muscling past Sanchez Contador. Gyro able to stop the ball arriving with Yite Towns. And now Kevin Yan is able to escape out of defence. Zinni again having moved across back onto the right side. Still um, just giving Richmond so many problems going forward. Doesn't look as if any of Richmond's fullbacks have really been able to deal with Zinni all night. It's going to have to change if they harbour any hopes of staying in this game. Like you say, Teo, it's also Kamal Ibrahim in that midfield uh, for Port Melbourne. So they do boast a very formidable lineup. And they'll give themselves every chance of getting through tomorrow night. And of course, the coach, Adam Piddick, was with Morton Bay United 
last season as they went on a cup round of their own up in Queensland. So we see Richmond committing some numbers forward here. Sanchez Contador has got up from left back. And now he's played through the left That's side. Cool. A great tackle. Slide challenge coming in. James Riccobene, Evendale's half-time sub. And now Gyro out of options, goes back to his keeper. The other game is back here. It's also a 7.30 kickoff. You'll be able to watch it on the NPL Victoria Facebook page and YouTube channel. And that will be Altona Magic, the home team here, up against Northcote City. So we see a long ball and offside. Oof. And you wonder if uh, Scraparis may have tested the patience of the referee to the point where he'll be booked. He will. Evangelos Scraparis becomes Richmond's third player on a yellow card, and he joins Medi Martin and uh, the now substituted Marcao. Yeah, and uh, probably unnecessary there from Scraparis. It just falls into Avondale's hands, doesn't it? It gives them an opportunity to milk a few more seconds, and it irritates Sam Pudikidis, who again is remonstrating with the fourth official. It just, it's the sort of thing that takes away the focus from the ultimate goal at hand, moments like that. Like you say, Teo, tomorrow night back here, uh, a real fascinating encounter with the two teams in different divisions, with differing fortunes as Richmond go forward. And it's a promising pass. Edgar Marcelino had to do a lot of work, though, and that's allowed Riccobene to come in and challenge at the byline. It was already beyond the line and out for a goal kick. So tomorrow night, uh, Northcote's defending against Oakley at the weekend. They lost 5-2. Certainly uh, a few problems that they'll be hoping to rectify. But Avondale's form, uh, sorry, Altona's form has been a little bit patchy in the NPL, particularly here at home. They've actually lost three home games in recent times to Brunswick, Eastern Lions and St Albans. So they're, they're far from sure things against a team in a higher division. This is another tough one to call, and I mean we've never had a round seven uh, game sort of uh, so close that it's gone to penalties since 2014. I think I don't think even we've had one go to extra time since 2014. So maybe we're due for one to go to extra time and penalties tomorrow night. Yeah, you just wonder um, what impact both of the coaches will have on that game. And Goran Lozanovsky and Eric Vasiliadis will know one another very well. It's Cam Saber now. Twisting and turning to try and get away from Saev, who wins the ball back off him. Obviously spent some time working together back at Port Melbourne a number of years ago. So a very good contest there. Um, Goran Lozanovsky, of course, coaching against the team who he led to the Victorian Premier League all those years ago now. So... A few little subplots there, and I'm sure that'll create a little bit more drama tomorrow evening to the story. But what an achievement it would be for Altona Magic Teo to somehow make it into or onto the national stage after being, you know, obviously in the state league only um, a year or so ago, and have made a, a very, very big rise. And they've got lofty ambitions, Altona, and what better way to meet those ambitions but by getting through to the FFA Cup round of 32. Really looking forward to that one tomorrow night. Well, it is pretty significant that of the FFA Cup teams at the pointy end, you've got not just the likes of Bentley and Avondale at the top of the highest division, but you've also got Zebras and Altona Magic who are top of NPL 2 West. Ball through the left and uh, quick out of his line, Reganovich is able to get to the ball before Cam Soba can chase it down. Richmond still trying to give as good as they get here, but they're just not able to cut through the way they were in the first half. Sanchez Contador able to win the throw here. Kevin Yan. Now Medi Martin. Yeah, it was Marcelino with some space on the ball there. After a neat little turn, and it was uh, Shimon Kato who was looking to be the recipient and couldn't get it. Richmond, go again. There are options ahead of the ball here. 
Instead, it's a long oh. shot coming in and it hits the woodwork. The follow up wide right. Shimon Kato denied. And it's going to be a goal kick. It is a luckless night for Richmond. And they are so close yet so far once again. And that is just extraordinarily bad luck for Arnold Saev. Yeah, what more can you say, Teo? You see the replay. That really has summed up Richmond's night to date. Off the post once more if that goes in. You still just feel if they scored one, mm. that the boost to their morale might be enough to get them back in the game here. Yep. But, but I mean, when it's not your night, some of the misses they've had this evening must have them feeling as though it's just not going to happen for them. Yeah, certainly make a case for that. But Marcelino going oh, forward. That's not subtle from Ross Archibald. Yeah, I think he'd be very lucky not to be cautioned. Archibald. Nicky Marcelino, the man he was pushing in the back. I think he's done well there to escape a yellow card. Marcelino was breaking with pace. Did have Avondale on the back foot. But it gives an opportunity from a set piece. De Silva going forward. There's some big men in the area with Scraparis as well. Here's the free kick. Marcelino bending it into the airspace of Oldfield. He was always favourite to claim the ball. Almost at the hour mark. Richmond have already made two subs. Avondale the one. Just a reminder for those of you familiar with Avondale's team in the NPL. No Kane Shepherd tonight, no Jonathan Germano, and no Joey Katavian. All three injured. And the first two actually played Friday night and were subbed off before half time. So Katavian's been out for about a month. However, Kane Shepherd and Jonathan Germano were scratchings tonight. It hasn't affected the firepower of Anthony Barbieri's team so far. Leading 3-0. Richmond are trying to turn the screws and have not given up on this one by a long shot, but that's also their chances of getting back into it on the scoreboard. Kevin Yan. Now turned central for Gyro. Ball tumbles its way over to Sanchez Contador. And he's given possession away to Christodoulou. And Evan Christodoulou trying to set Liam Boland through the left. Long ball from Gyro. And the runners are away here for Richmond. No one in the penalty area yet, so they're going to have to hold it up. Eventually, the numbers have arrived. Ooh. Shimon Cato, wiped out by Jeff Fleming. Took the ball and left the man sprawling on the turf. Fleming. In the end, possession just given back, but it was great tackle to win the ball initially. Yeah, he had to make that tackle count. Jeff Fleming, if he's a second too late there. Richmond, be back in this game from the penalty spot. Again, Jeff Fleming, know how much experience he has at this level. Again, demonstrating that tonight. He has been a rock, particularly in the last 45 minutes for Avondale. In the middle of the park, really marshalling them and taking control of this game. It's hard, hard to believe, Sean, that it is 12 years since he last won his, his caps for New Zealand. Through ball, Cato left it behind. Tapsensi Oglu back to Oldfield. He is like a fine wine. Jeff Fleming is just maturing very, very well with age. He doesn't look as if he's lost any pace even over the last handful of years. Still acquits himself very well at this level. And Thank you, Marcelino. You can see him getting frustrated with some of the physical attention that he's got. Oh. And now a little bit of afters. Rigobane knocked him over. And it's Bronx cheers from the Richmond fans and bench as James Rigobane gets Avondale's first yellow card of the night in the 63rd minute. And I think that uh, the cumulative effect of fouling Edgar Marcelino certainly played a role in that as well. Yeah, probably did. Getting underneath the skin there of Riccobene. But it's all probably going to count for, for nothing unless you know, Richmond can make anything of this. But it is Marcelino with a nice gesture going across 
shaking the hand of James Riccobene as the referee comes down to the Richmond dugout to have a few words at the bench. We've obviously made their views clear on that. It hasn't been ne nearly as fiery on the bench as I expected coming in tonight. Perhaps the football has been just a bit too compelling for both dugouts to get too preoccupied with each other. Even if they are knocked out tonight, Richmond, their focus will turn firmly back to trying to win promotion into the NPL, where they currently sit second on the southeast table because Manningham United Blues are just like Richmond, unbeaten, and sitting on top of the league by two points at present. Over in the northwest, it's the long soccer club ahead of North Sunshine Eagles. A great ball, Lasayev sitting very, very deep as opposed to the first half. Saev Shimon Kato, neat link up play here, but his shot is blocked instantly. Now, another chance. Tapsensi Ogli went to ground, still battling and scrapping in there. Erlan Spinetto, now the shot comes in, but it was tumbling wide in the end. Not too much threat to the Avondale team. Looks like they might be reading a substitution. Tao Jem Bacant. Looking as if he might be coming on very, very shortly. He'll be playing central midfield, so it'll be interesting to see who he replaces out there. Suspect maybe Evan Christodoulou. Not sure if they would uh, consider taking off Yite Towns, given how well he's played in this game. The physicality continues between Edgar Marcelino and James Riccobene. Those two can't leave each other alone at the moment. Pascalis Nardis with a bit more work as a peacekeeper. Throwing's taken before the sub can go through. And so, Elan Pinedo plays it to Shimon Kato. The subs oh. link up and it's missed wide right. And it is starting to become almost farcical. The chances that Richmond have missed, and Saev on this occasion has it slide off the outside of his foot and somehow missed the target. Yeah, I'm not sure what else really Richmond can do tonight. Um, apart from you know, putting the ball in the back of the net, they've done everything they possibly could apart from that. As Avondale make a substitution, Liam Boland's night is over. And, uh, long term, this is a worry because he's been handed a bag of ice as soon as he gets to the bench. He looked very sore and sorry as he walked off the pitch. Mm. And this Avondale team that was struggling to fit all their strikers into the lineup, all of a sudden find almost all of them out of, uh, out of action. Yeah, indeed. Um, they do, in spite of that, Teo have so much firepower coming forward all the same. The fact that they can, can bring on the likes of Burkan and still have Kamsaba, Yide Towns still in that front third. It's all that matters, but I think from their point of view, they'd probably be relieved. I think their attacking um, requirements and work are probably all done tonight, unless Richmond can probably try and get themselves into this game. But I guess they've had those two chances in the last 10 minutes and haven't been able to take them. So. You wonder whether that's going to be it. They have to continue to stay hard at work, Richmond. The chances have been there. The oh. finishing emphatically has not. Edgar Marcelino plays it out to Saev. His miss just minutes ago. Down in the corner. And it's going to be an Avondale throw. Some extraordinary footwork there from Marcelino. Great ball control. Really, really a joy to watch. Just They just haven't had the cutting edge tonight. Richmond in the front third. You can tell they've got the individual talent. It's all over the park in every position. Just haven't been able to make it count. <laughs> and uh, I wonder if he's sold it for all it's worth there. It was a bit of old school footy hip and shoulder sort of thing coming through there from Chris Tadoulou. And he's just ironed out Inyaki Sanchez Contador, who has absolutely sold that one for all it's worth. I guess uh, anything to try and get a bit of an advantage for his team. But, uh, I don't think the contact was anywhere near his face, with all due respect, Sean. 
No, it probably is something you probably would see a little bit more often. The MCJ on a Saturday afternoon, Teo, but like you say, the Spaniard there, probably milking that somewhat. Richmond have spent a lot of time in their attacking half in the last 10 minutes, trying to make it count for at least one, but again, Oldfield is able to rise unchallenged. And as much as Junior Batista may have been the culprit for the miss of the night, Sean, his absence uh, in the second half means they don't really have a focal point at the top of the attack. They've got a lot of mm. uh, wingers and attacking midfielders, but they just don't have the number nine to actually lead the line up there, do they? No, they don't. Um, and I guess that puts more of an onus on the likes of, of Sue and, and Kato to you know, move forward and, and try and create themselves, which... They have, uh, Sayev that is, with an earlier chance. He's dropping very, very deep and then coming in and, and moving forward into an attacking position. So you can't say that he hasn't been working hard tonight and giving everything he's got. Spent time in the fourth and fifth years of German football tower for, for some time. So I have, I believe, has some Russian ancestry as well. He's had his moments tonight, the good and the bad. Marcelino up against Rick Bene. They go piling into each other and looks as though Edgar Marcelino is going to have the foul paid against him here. What's the call? I think it's a foul. By Rick Bene. It is. I mean, I, as much as he was sucked on at half time here, Edgar Marcelino is really working him over. Mm. If you're Anthony Barbieri, do you actually consider, for starters, switching flanks, mo mo moving him into midfield, or uh, just trying to get him out of harm's way here? Because you don't want him to get sent off. And I think he's, re he's the only Avondale player on a yellow card, and yet he's the only one that looks potentially at risk of getting booked again. Yeah, you make a good point. There he is, James Riccobane. Free kick in the meantime for Richmond. Can they peg one back? Can they set up a big last 20 minutes here to try and make it a little bit nervous for Avondale? Plenty of chatter going on inside the penalty area, waiting for this free kick to arrive. To the far post, Gyro got up, couldn't get it back towards the frame of the goal. Yeah, good leap there from Gyro to Silva. Probably the better option, probably the tallest player in the 18-yard area. A good little chip over the top. I think the silver from that range and with that leap, he should be doing better at least trying to get the ball on target. He's probably trying to sneak the ball in around that left post, but I think from that range, you've got to be doing better and making Oldfield make a save. Again, it's just been the theme of Richmond's night. Very, very close, but not close enough. Jeff Fleming. The can't. Loose touch. Sabah's barely had a say in matters in his few minutes since coming on. Mainly because the ball has been down in Richmond's attacking half. And they are on the attack once again. Shimon Kato. And then given away. Cam Sober. Could the counter attack no. put this one in the books? It's two on one. Cam Sober. With a step over oh, and sending Avondale to the national rounds. Out comes the somersault. Elvis Cam Sober makes it Avondale 4, Richmond 0. And after riding their luck through the first 15 minutes of this match, they have put down a marker and stamped their authority on this contest out of sight. And they have 20 minutes of smiling to do before their progression is sealed for the very first time to the national rounds. Game over indeed. Teo, Elvis Kamsova moving forward. And just look at that pace. Too, too good for Richmond tonight. I thought he may have um, done the unselfish thing and knocked the ball across. But when you can finish like that as a centre forward, you may as well do that. And he has come on um, after not featuring in the starting 11 on the weekend. Kamsova and made himself counted tonight. Being in the starting 11, he's really, really stood up to the task and um, put this game well and truly uh, to bed now. And Richmond's night has just gotten a little bit worse. Stefan Zinni is going to be put in cotton wool here. Avondale perhaps turning their 
Attention now to their league campaign where they are in a seemingly a three-team race for the Premier's plate. Maybe uh, in the second half of the year more contenders could emerge in the NPL, but they are competing on multiple fronts. And let's not forget the, the winner of tonight's match, which at this stage looks like it will be Avondale, will have to play one extra game in the Doherty Cup, Sean, because five doesn't go into four, and uh, Heidelberg as the reigning NPL champions. We've got a Richmond man injured here. That's Erlans Pinedo. The subs come on and he's already potentially uh, hurt himself here. Looks though a quick word to the bench and he'll try and run it off but the Doherty Cup semi-finals can't be worked out until Heidelberg have their chance to defend the trophy and it means that they have to play a playoff match and uh, right now it would be Heidelberg against Avondale for the, the right to, to go through to the Doherty Cup semi-finals. Yeah and you want to make sure that you've got all your Best plays around for, for that sort of fixture. And Stefan Zinni, talk about quality plays. I thought he's been absolutely phenomenal tonight. Really, really gave Richmond so much trouble on both flanks, whichever way he played. And I think that's a very smart move from Anthony Barbieri, getting him off, keeping him nice and fit and injury-free. Um, he, he hasn't had the, the greatest campaign so far in the NPL this year, but seen what he can do tonight when he is on form he can be one of the better players in Victorian football and Christian Inglese chasing the ball there Jeff Fleming is breaking away Inglese now the sub straight into the action cuts it back Christodoulou is a left footer and sent that one high over the bar and out for a goal kick but uh, we saw Inglese score his first senior goal in the previous round of the cup Sean there's Erlans Pinedo he's down injured again and well the halftime sub might be in a real spot of bother here and Richmond might have to use their third and final change on taking him off if he can't continue. Decision continues, uh, discussion I should say, continues on the Richmond bench. But Inglaise is on. He scored against North Sunshine Eagles in round six and I'm sure he'll be hunting another goal here tonight. Yeah, well, they are there for the taking, Richmond. I think they know now that the game is, is well and truly past them. Um, you might see the likes of Kamsaba licking their lips now. Trying to go for you know, a little bit more blood. Maybe put five or six past them in the end. But I think from what we've seen from Richmond tonight, I don't think they'll be laying down. I think they've got a little bit too much pride. And hopefully for their sake, they can keep going until the final minute. Here's Helens Pinedo. Seemed to be moving all right, but he gave up possession. And, well, won a foul. He was fouled in doing so. Who's your man of the match for the post-match interview, Sean? Is it Elvis? Yeah, I mean, Kamsaba and, and Stefan Zinni, I think, are uh, putting their hands up for that after their performances tonight. But um, wait and see. I think if Kamsaba puts another one away, I think it would be very hard to argue with that. Still, of course, 15 minutes plus stoppage to go. Might just reach for the record books in a moment and look at what the biggest scoreline in a round seven tie is. I mentioned before that only one in 16. We're going to have a yellow card here for Kevin Yan, it looks like. So Yan joins Medi Martin and Evangelos Skaparis in the book. We've, we mentioned earlier, Sean, that we've only ever had one FFA Cup round seven tie go to penalties, and that was all the way back in 2014. But by equal measure, we, we rarely have had thrashings in... Round seven of the cup either. Either I'm just looking at the ties here. South Springvale beat Hume City 3-0 back in 2014. Hume City beat Richmond 4-0 in 2016. Bentley Greens beat South Melbourne 4-0 in 2016. I was there for that one. The record, uh, Heidelberg beat Goulburn Valley Suns 5-1 in 2015. And then the record is uh, South Melbourne 6, Frankston Pines 1 all the way back in 2015. So... At least they're, uh, they're a goal away, mm. Avondale, from matching the margin uh, for the record score in a round seven tie. And Richmond, uh, perhaps, if nothing else, would want to avoid conceding for that reason alone. Yeah, it is possible. Um, Avondale could do that. If Richmond can keep their heads and you know, make something here. Maybe Avondale might have just mentally clocked off as well, which could give Richmond the chance to finally breach the back of the net. Sanchez Contador to Shimon Cato. Riccobane defended like a man on a yellow card there. Just in the end, able to use his body cleverly enough to avoid committing a foul. 
Yeah, he did well there, Ricky Benny. No need um, to stick a leg out there. And he did very well. Cato probably had to do a little bit more if he wanted to earn his team a penalty. But Ricky Benny did the right thing and it's worked out in the end for them. And again, Richmond defeated once more. If they were going forward, it's just a little bit too easy for Avondale now. Goal kick coming up. So I'm sure around the country people will watch this stream back, do their homework on Avondale. Of course, they're one of the better clubs filming their games, home and away. Chat Media will have all the highlights online from their previous cup ties in their NPL matches. So if you were a coach, say you were from New South Wales NPL or Queensland NPL and you draw Avondale, how would you prepare for them, Sean? What would be the, uh, the most important thing you would ready your team with before a potential trip to Melbourne or before a potential visit from Avondale to your home ground? Well, I can't say I've got much coaching experience, Tara, but you would have to look at um, obviously that front third of, of Avondale, like we've said tonight, although they're missing the likes of Katabian, um, Kane Shepard. Uh, just, they've just got so much depth, haven't they, going forward. Um, you know, with Liam Bolan, and, and they've still got the likes of Jonathan Hermano to come back into this team, and we all know what he can do when he is injury-free. Um, it, it's a very, very tough task for um, opposing teams to try and line up against Avondale, but you know, might be able to take some lessons from you know, what Bentley Greens did to them a few weeks ago, and obviously Heidelberg, you know, able to hold them as well on the weekend, so if they can try and get some uh, footage of those games there might be a few lessons there but it's very very difficult they've just got so much depth all around the park you've got the likes of Chris Oldfield and Gold it's a very very tough task they're a very very well balanced team and Anthony Barbieri has been at this club for so many years now it's a very good team on his hands Tav Sensioglu clearing the ball high and long it's one of the FFA Cup tie taking place around the country tonight it's up in Queensland and well, uh, those who love the sentimentality of the former NSL teams playing in the Cup are going to be disappointed because in stoppage time, Peninsula Power now lead Brisbane Strikers 3-0. So we're not going to see Brisbane Strikers in the round of 32 this year. We mentioned earlier that South Melbourne, Melbourne Knights were knocked out early doors in Victorian qualifying. In fact, they were knocked out at the very first opportunity by Hume City and Altona Magic, respectively. Here's Saev. Oh. oh, it's hit the underside of the crossbar. And the follow-up, they finally get their goal. Shimon Cato makes it Avondale 4, Richmond 1. And it looked as though the luckless night was set to continue with the strike rocketing back off the underside of the crossbar. But at last, Richmond get their goal. You can't say they don't deserve it, Teo. Finally, Richmond rewarded for some excellent prowess going forward. And Cato with a, a very, very neat finish. Um, but it was the shot from range. Finally, Richmond, I think, just decided to go for it, really. And then finally, they've been rewarded for that. And I must say, as a neutral, I'm happy to see Richmond finally um, get themselves onto the score sheet. I know they probably would have hoped that uh, that goal would have come maybe 60 or 70 minutes earlier than that. But um, all the same, at least they've finally got themselves you know, something tangible to walk away from this game from. It may still be a little bit too late, but you just don't know. I think it's Voliotis now. He might be coming on a quick substitution. Kevin Yan out of the game, so like for like swap. Fresh legs into midfield. The Frenchman via Darwin. Kevin Yan. There's Voliotis, the Australian midfielder who was with Richmond last year. One of very few Australians um, on the pitch for Richmond this evening. We'll see if he can make an impact with the few minutes that he has on the, fit, the field. That's Saev. He's off and running again. Encouraged by his shot that hit the woodwork a moment ago. Challenge comes through and clears it away. Avondale, in their previous games, had beaten Werribee City 3-0. Berlin Lions 5-0. North Sunshine Eagles 5 4-0, so that's blotted the copybook to an extent because they'd scored, what's that? Uh, 8, 13, 16 goals mm. uh, without reply. Without reply yeah. And now it's 16-4, 1 against. But uh, I think that uh, they wouldn't be too unhappy about that, that they've uh, managed to get this far without uh, 
falling behind for starters and uh, obviously only now conceding their first goal in the FFA Cup this year. Yeah, an incredibly compact defence overall, Avondale. Um, which, you know, did show signs of um, vulnerability tonight, it must be said, in that first quarter of an hour. They haven't been completely I, flawless. I think if Richmond had taken the lead tonight, they possibly would have won the tie, really. Yep. Uh, they, were, they were creating, they were playing that well, and I think it's, it's, been, a mental, it's been a mental battle tonight. Mm. Even if Richmond had uh, scored one back for 3-1 early in the second half, I think that this was well and truly game on. But I, Avondale have shown, I think, greater mental strength out there. Yeah, they have. And they've just made you know, their opportunities count at crucial moments in the game where it was there for the taking. That's just you know, the difference. So Richmond will rue those chances and... You know, reflect on what may have been, you know, for their sake now, it's a case of trying to keep pushing and make Avondale's night a little bit less glamorous on the scoreboard. Maybe try and pinch another goal or two here. Well, they are quite literally running out of time. If they can peg one more back by, I don't know, the 87-minute mark, that would give them three minutes of regulation and three minutes of stoppage for two more. And we did talk about South Melbourne versus Dandenong City. It has been done, but uh, I think just on the basis of how things have transpired since the ball hit the back of the net, Avondale have just locked back up again. We've made all three subs, both teams now. Kato, sorry Tao, not giving up the ghost. Trying to put some pressure on Chris Oldfield. And it's good to see Richmond. They're still trying to get men forward and, and push. Really am liking their attitude. Maybe a little bit too late. Most teams that make round of 32 actually prefer the away trip. The players love the holiday. So I wonder... But however, the club administrators mm. obviously prefer the home ties. It'll be interesting to see where Avondale ends up playing their home games, actually, in the round of 32. The Whites would need a, a bit of work here at Paisley Park. I suspect that even a temporary grandstand wouldn't go astray if they were to draw an A-League opponent. You wouldn't break, bring that into Dawl Street, would you, Tao? Well, temporary grandstand. Uh, Avondale's previous home ground of course Doyle Street Reserve pretty much a suburban park but one that did host NPL in the first season in the top flight they credit to Avondale they did put the temporary grandstand in there to seat about 300 here's the corner for Edgar Marcelino and Gyro was rising but it is Avondale getting it away through Towns follow up into traffic and flag is up for offside but, uh, since then they've spent two years at Knight Stadium and now they're playing their home games here and finally They've got themselves a home, the Reggio Calabria Club. And I tell you, when that is finished, I think it's going to be a pretty exciting home venue. I just hope that uh, maybe uh, they can read the landscape, Avondale, and whether they're a Friday night or a Saturday night or even a Monday night team, try and carve out a little, uh, a little iconic time slot for themselves once uh, the venue is up and running. Yeah, it would be good for them to have a bit of regularity and to really have a genuine home ground. We all know Dawl Street was that for many years until you know, they've made that rise until the NPL. But, you know, if they can continue to get the success on the pitch and attract, you know, the, the likes of the players that they've got, it would be good for them to you know, make their mark, like you say, you know, the regular fixture week to week in the NPL and really create a fortress for themselves at home. Don't underestimate the uh, influence of a cup run. We've, we've seen what it's done for Hume City. Yep. And I really do think that Avondale is the potential opportunity team in this year's tournament that, again, they could uh, find their average attendance going from somewhere between 50 and 100 to you know 300 plus per game off the back of a, a couple of high-profile cup ties. Maybe they end up in a main TV game. Who knows what it could do for the club? Yep, you, know, you just never know and... You know, it was only a few years ago that we were seeing Hume City's 
stand being built out at ABD Stadium and mainly, like you say, those sort of numbers turning up to their matches and we'll know what an FFA Cup run has done for them. Plenty of good things on and off the field. So Avondale will be, like you say, hoping for a similar sort of result. Still got to try and get over the line in the last few minutes, though. Well, they've been able to negate the last five. Richmond goal hit the back of the net in the 81st minute. They're trying for a second. Marcelino always wanted to pass. Players in each other's way. Shimon Cato. Avondale with numbers back behind the ball now, though. Marcelino still showing his quality, though. Full of energy at the end of the night. And it's not a bad foul to give away that far from goal. Pretty much need to score from this free kick and then hope for the best, Avondale, to have a chance of pulling off the miracle. That's what they've been able to do very night, uh, very well tonight. Avondale get plenty of bodies behind the ball nice and quickly and try and restrict Richmond to some shots from range. Haven't really been able to give Chris Oldfield too many problems in this second half. It's probably a byproduct of, of Avondale's quick defence. Marcelino's free kick. And there, there is one area where they have underwhelmed set-piece delivery tonight. Richmond at times seems to have picked out the blue shirt almost every opportunity. And Yite Towns will take us into the last minute of regulation by blazing it into the fans. So Heidelberg United have been there since October. Bentley Greens punched their ticket back on Wednesday last week. And now Avondale is going to make it the top three teams in the league Ooh. going to the round of 32 as we see a collision between Oldfield and the oncoming opponent. He's just going to blow play dead here because Mitty Martin has been hurt and Chris Oldfield is down as well. Tonight's win may have come at a cost for Avondale because we saw Liam Boland leave the game looking a bit sore. Last player they would want to lose is Oldfield. Evan Markagianakis, the... Uh, Second goalkeeper is a, well, you wouldn't say a veteran of the NPL. He's probably not that old, but he's a very experienced backup goalkeeper. So now we wait for assessment to take place. This will take us into stoppage time. I suspect we've got no more than three or four minutes, but this might artificially inflate it. Yeah, it's difficult to tell exactly what's happened to Oldfield, whether I think you can probably tell now he may have received some contact to uh, the rear of his shoulder there or near his neck. It looks as if he will be able to see out the, the final couple of minutes. Well, that smile from the coach says it all, doesn't it? It says that uh, they're not too worried. Anthony Barbieri has presided over this remarkable rise for Avondale up the divisions and now He'll also have the credit of taking them into the round of 32 for the first time. And I'm sure it'll be him or perhaps his assistant coach, Zoran Markovsky, that has flown up to Sydney for the Fox Studios and the draw. Three minutes of injury time. The referee puts the board up. I think it's going to be... Very hard to not see a smile on Anthony Barbieri's face for the rest of the night. Probably potentially one of the, the greatest moments in his coaching career and one of the proudest moments. I must say, the second half, what do you reckon the territory possession, uh, the territory stats would be? 65, 70% of the game in Richmond's attacking half, if not more? Yeah, potentially. And they just haven't really had the cutting edge. No, they haven't. And it's been the story of their night. Avondale played the game very intelligently and struck when they had to. And I guess, again, that's the difference. And we've said it a bit tonight, but it is the difference between you know, the top tier and the better teams and the teams trying to make themselves you know, reach that level. It's the third time now, Richmond, that they will miss out. In round and seven, round seven. <laughs> it's a great point. And it's three totally different incarnations of Richmond, isn't it? Because mm. the 2014 team was back when they were in the top flight and, you know, seemingly a, you know, season-to-season -season contender. And 
you look at how different their team is now, it's hard to believe it's it's the same name, but it's a completely different club, Richmond, that uh, are missing out here. Yeah, it's extraordinary. But you know, hopefully, for their sake, um, the players in this team will bounce back from this and, and turn all their focus to you know, trying to clinch State League One competition that they're in, getting back up to where Richmond would want to be long term, and that's back in the Premier League. But this would have been a, a really big chance for them tonight, Richmond. But it looks as if that's going to be given to Avondale. There's only second remain. And as stoppage time expires, Avondale for the first time are heading to the national rounds of the FFA Cup. 4-1 doesn't begin to tell the story of how extraordinary this night was in terms of the chances exchanged between the teams. But ultimately, Avondale's cutting edge proved the winning difference. Two goals in the space of three minutes just after the half-hour mark. Set them on course. And full-time at Paisley Park comes to an end with Avondale 4, defeating Richmond 1. It was Liam Boland's penalty that got it all started. Two minutes later, Yite Towns 2-0. And then Stefan Zinni in the 41st minute made it three goals in 10 minutes. And it was always going to be too tall an order for Richmond from there. A fourth goal on the counter-attack from Elvis Campsober on 72 minutes. And then Richmond didn't leave empty-handed. Shimon Cato scoring in the 81st minute. But uh, by then, the game was well and truly out of reach. Sean Moran, I'll give you the final word then. Gee, it was an entertaining game. And I still think if Richmond had scored first, they probably could have won this tie. But... They will rue the first 15 minutes and the chances that went begging. Yeah, they will, Teo, and it is a, a real heartbreaking night for Richmond tonight. Um, like you say, they really, really gave it to Avondale in the first 15 minutes and created so many problems for them. And we were really taken aback by that. Um, but as they did Avondale against North Sunshine in the previous round, they were able to utilise you know, their attacking strike force and, and really make that count when it was needed at critical points of the game. And they did uh, all the talking on the scoreboard and, and that's really what counts in a sudden death fixture such as this. Uh, Richmond you know, will reflect on this and realise you know, they do have the talent and they did have potentially uh, you know, the, the players to really undo Avondale and, and compete at this level, which will be you know, tremendous feedback for them. But ultimately, you know, you know that they'd be wanting to get onto the national scene and this again is another chance gone begging for them they're probably not going to get that many it's very difficult to get to this stage and um, a real big uh, chance loss for them but uh, complete opposite uh, fortune for Avondale they'll be absolutely delighted probably one of the biggest moments in there in the club's history really to get through to the round of 32 of the FFA Cup you can't say they didn't deserve it they've really built a formidable team Teo over the last few years and, and it has culminated in them um, getting to this stage of the competition and, and going forward um, I mean, starting off in, in humble surrounds only a few years ago to, to getting to the national stage a lot of credit must go to Anthony Barbieri and the staff there at Avondale and also obviously the players tonight who've gelled together and, and come together um, for this club and to get through to this stage a, a lot of credit must go to them and what an exciting time for everyone um, affiliated with Avondale Football Club so at Avondale's list, uh, name to uh, Bentley Greens and also Heidelberg United on the list. Tomorrow night on the Football Federation Victoria Facebook page and YouTube channel, it will be Port Melbourne versus the Moreland Zebras. You can join uh, Chris Gleeson and Ante Jukic for that game. And back at Paisley Park here, streaming on the NPL Victoria Facebook page and YouTube channel, you will be able to see Altona Magic against Northcote City, and you'll be able to join Mark Van Aken and Matthew McNamara for the broadcast of that one. On behalf of our production crew tonight, John Power, Dave Barker, Nathan Sakalariu, VidNet Productions, and also Sean Moran, my name is Teo Pelizzeri. Thank you for your company tonight. And we leave you from Paisley Park with Avondale 4 defeating Richmond 1 to advance to the FFA Cup round of 32.